Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. Today, we're taking the show to the dogs. We're going to be talking about the upcoming Mutt Strut event, as well as adoption processes for both Suffolk Animal Care and the Suffolk Humane Society. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene. We have three very special guests with us for this particular segment to talk about the 10th annual Mutt Strut event. Now, of course, that's coming up here in Suffolk. It's been a fan favorite for a number of years, as the 10th anniversary will indicate, but this year, again, extra special. So I want to thank our guests for being with us today. We have Margie Wiley and Mike Duman, both board Welcome. members with the Suffolk Humane Society, and Teddy, who's just kind of chilling, chilling today. So um, chilling. Uh, we won't ask him too many questions. We won't <laughs> put the stress on him. So we'll, we'll pitch it over to the two of you. So we talk about Mutt Strut. What are we talking about? I know it's a big fundraiser for the Humane Society. It's a big event. It's coming up on Sunday, May 6th, 6th May again, 6th. Bennett's Creek Park. 11 to 4. So again, we got the pr basic parameters there, but let's talk about what's gonna happen between that five hours of fun. So uh, with it being our 10th annual one, we really want to make sure that we raise as much money as possible. So we have a goal this year of 35000 wow, to be okay. able to do that. Yeah, so some of the things that you can expect is obviously to have food vendors out there. We have Amici's coming out with their brand new brick oven pizza that they're going to be doing. Yep. We have Momac Brewery, so we'll have some beer out there for adult beverages. Um, we'll have some kettle corn. We always like to have more vendors uh, come out food vendor wise, so there's still time. If anybody's interested, we yep. can go ahead and do that. Good. But really what you can expect is just clean, old fashioned fun right. with you and your family and four legged and two legged. <laughs> be able to do that. Now, there is no admission charge, but of course donations are definitely accepted, again, going to the Humane Society and all the great work that y'all do throughout the year, correct? Correct. I think, Margie, they can go uh, online to the Suffolk Humane Society mm -hmm. website okay. and register for the pre pledge walk or to just make a donation. But as you mentioned, ad admission is free. You don't have to have a dog. A lot right. of people come without dogs. <laughs> just bring your kids. Right. Bring your kids or come by yourself. Uh, obviously feel free to bring your dog in. There's also, in the past, I'm not sure what we have scheduled this year, but in the past, we've not only had dogs, but we've had vendors that have been They've had snakes yeah. and turtles. And so we do have yeah, that. We do it. have that this year. I'm glad actually Mike brought that up. Right. We have 18 nonprofits that come out. Okay. So to my, uh, to Mike's point. If you are coming and you don't have an animal right now, but you're interested in adopting, mm -hmm. we have uh, Beagle Rescue that'll be out there, German Shepherd Rescue, Giant Heart, Giant Dog Rescue will be out there, Viper, which All is right. our reptile rescue that comes out and shows some, uh, that's the one place I don't go to. I love all God's creatures, but <laughs> right. snakes are not my yeah, thing. Yeah, got to draw a line somewhere. Absolutely, I so, but um, it's a great opportunity to be able to maybe find a, a pet or a, a new forever home for one of our animals that are out there as well. So it sounds like it's a pretty comprehensive event as far as, like you said, whether you're already a pet owner or wanting to become one, or and again with all the organizations you talked about. But one nice part of this is the dog walk. Talk about what that is and really what that represents and what will be taking place there. So we have what's called a pledge walk. Mm -hmm. So uh, people walk for the pledge walk for all different reasons. Sometimes folks will walk in memory of pets that they've lost. Other times people will say, we're gonna walk together as a team because we wanna be able to raise money to help the Humane Society. Right. All the money that we raise, we are not involved with any other chapters throughout the United States. It's all raised here in the community and it all stays here in the community. So you can rest assured that the donations that come through, we will put to good use um, here locally. Got it. Now, you, you talked about it in a bit. We talked actually before we started taping about a unique event as far as, you have to explain exactly what it is, as far as dogs are chasing a trash bag, but it's really a lot more than just that. And it's, it's, it's kind of sounds like a pretty kind well, of a fun thing to watch. It, it was a new addition. Right to our activities last year, and it turned out to be really a crowd favorite. It's sure. called a luring course, L-U-R-E, and you may have seen it on TV, but what it is is a config configuration of wiring that's placed on the ground, mm -hmm. and there's a trash bag that kind of simulates a live animal, right. and the dogs will chase that through a course that is being remotely controlled, so the operator can speed it up or slow it down, and some of the dogs are really amazing and then of course they're timed from the start of the course sure. to the end but it's, it's turned out to be a great spectator sport mm -hmm. at the same time and that's just one of the activities that we have i mean we've got uh you know i'm just looking at the sure. brochure we got cornhole we got dog demonstrations we got a frosty paws eating contest <laughs> so the frosty dogs, paws eating you know, contest is always you know, a lot of fun right. but, so but we, i'm going to brag i had a golden retriever that recently <laughs> passed away that was a three-time champion of the golden hey. of the frosty paws eating right. contest and what 
Frosty Paws, if you don't know what they are, is kind of like the old ice cream dish cups with the little wooden spoons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put it down, and of course, whatever dog can consume their Frosty Paws in the shortest <laughs> amount of time wins. But that's a, a crowd favorite. Sure. Um, we have the canine demonstrations that come out with right. the canine cops. So mm -hmm. those are terrific to be able to watch yes. and see those dogs in action because you really get to experience the training that mm -hmm. they have to be able to do their jobs every right. day, right. which helps keep folks safe. Mm -hmm which is a good thing to be able to do. And, and I think you mentioned the fact that with the police department participating as they do in Suffolk Animal Care as well, well it's a great partnership with the city and the Humane Society to do this. I mean, certainly Humane Society is a driving force behind the event, but, but to be able to include the city on that, I think is a great thing because everybody's in partnership to really get the ownership numbers up, you know, get those strays off the street and take better care of our animals in and, general. And I believe that one of the things that folks don't understand is our partnership that we do have with Suffolk Animal mm -hmm. Care. Uh, we do not actually house the animals at our facilities um, over on Kings Fork. Instead, we partner with Suffolk Animal Care so that this way we can get their dogs adopted sure. and having them um, find you know good homes. Mm -hmm. So we, we value that partnership 100 percent. Indeed, right. indeed. To, and honestly, without the participation of the city, with them being the partner that they are, this really the event would not be as successful right. as it is because we've got the venue Tents. Uh, they provide some in-kind services sure. mm -hmm. to go along with the relationship that we do have with the Suffolk Animal Care Center and the key there with that relationship is that we partner you know to assist with the adoptions and and without that Right. You know, the, the numbers would not look as good as they do. So we really appreciate everything that the city's done for the Humane Society over 100%. the years. And just talking about the Humane Society for a second as well, um, the fact I know both of you, we introduce you as board members, mm -hmm. and, and it is a volunteer organization, yes. and it takes people in the community to want to get out there to do what they want to do for their animals or the animals of their neighbors or whatever to make it a better community really for everyone, correct? correct. I mean, as far as what everybody's working toward. So we, we have one paid position, which is our executive director. Sure. But other than that, we do have all volunteer um, staff that comes out. And we have opportunities. So again, going on the website, calling the office. Um, we have everything from socializing the kittens that we have to cleaning the cat cages <laughs> if you wanted to, to go out and do that. So we absolutely have opportunities. Right. It's interesting. We have um, a dance troupe coming out, the Allianz Dance Troupe. They've been partnering with us over the past, um, since the beginning of the year. And they're going to come out and do a dance actually at Muttstrut. Oh, cool. Yeah, for that. And they're raising money right. um, of helping and doing that. But they've come out um, and done different projects. So those are all young girls right. so you you don't have to necessarily um, be over the age of 21 to come out and help right. uh, we always look for for volunteers right. to help out too and, and really we invite everyone to come by and visit the Suffolk Humane Society's new office which is located on Kings Fork Road it's 412 Kings Fork Road but it's very easy to find it's right. in between Kings Fork Middle School and Suffolk Youth Athletic Association yep. on the right uh, come on by. It's almost two acres, and like Margie said, we all always have need for volunteers. Sure. So please stop by and um, see. It. Just check the place out and <laughs> see if you want to make a contribution. Well, you talked about all the sponsors and the fact that you're going to have vendors on site, and really, it, it almost seems to be more of a question of what don't you have more so than what do you have for the event. You mentioned uh, we talked again before we started taping a band. You're going to have a band out there. We you have Rio the Band yeah. that'll be out there. Yes. We. Um, our sponsors are hugely impactful. Mm -hmm. um, it helps us be able to put on the event. So we have Suffolk Animal Hospital. Right. We have Academy Animal Care. We have Windsor Pet Hospital. Mike Duman is also a sponsor. So we really love the way the community rallies around this. It's interesting. I was on Facebook this morning, and we have almost a thousand people that are interested in coming to this event. Perfect. So it is. That's one of those yeah. things that people every year. As we're getting ready to do this, they're like, can I be a vendor? Can mm -hmm. I be a sponsor? Can I get involved? So there's still time to do that. Right. We would love to um, give everyone opportunity to be a part of the Much Strut, and especially think, the 10th year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Bennett's Creek Park sets up nicely for a venue like it's this. Perfect. I know they have the stage there as well, in addition to the fact they have the kind of the it's really a, a car path around, but again, you can be utilizing a nice circular setup, so it sets up perfect for the vendors and the demonstrations. Got a lot of land there to utilize. And it's it's 11 to 4, yeah. so plan on coming out, bring the family, right. get something to eat. Sure. As you mentioned, we have lots of activities 
Uh, a if lot of things to keep the kids interested mm -hmm. in. And also, I want to get a plug in for the Suffolk Roading Club yep. also. The Suffolk Roading Club has volunteered to do all the parking again this year, which Perfect. is a huge help. Uh, and it is a great venue. Right. Uh, we had it at Sleepy Hole Park mm -hmm. several several years, and that, that was fine. But sure. it seems like Bennett's Creek is right. a little more conducive. It's a little smaller, yeah. uh, a little bit more of a... I don't want to say intimate atmosphere. Yeah, right. I was going to say yeah. intimate atmosphere, sure. but I don't know if that was the right word. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's turned out great with the track. It's good for walking. Right. Um, the boat ramps there. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah, you mentioned great you kids. Venue. You have that little park that's just yep. off of the main main drag, so to speak, right there. So again, it sets up perfectly. Uh, we have just a couple minutes left in this segment, so I want to give you each a shot here uh, for those who maybe haven't been to a much stride event before. Uh, again, this year, the 10th annual. Correct. Um, what would you say to get someone to encourage them to come out? Because if they haven't experienced everything you've had in the past, so this year you always try to ramp it up a notch every year, the, kind of the sales pitch, if you will, to get people to come out and participate. Margie, we'll start with you. So I would say the sales pitch is, is that you can come out and get a chance to interact with the animals. Mm -hmm. You get an opportunity to um, walk around, maybe take a new pet home with you. You also get a chance to see what our parks locally have to offer as well. I think that that's a great opportunity sure. also. But I, I, I think it also gives you a chance to see what you can really get in a city that works together to help take care of our animals. And I, I think it's a great opportunity to be able to do that. A um, little bit of uh, beer tasting, a little bit of eating, a little bit of um, hanging out with animals. It's a great way to spend a Sunday. Indeed. Yeah, well, just to wrap it up in a nutshell, really, it's just a fun, family-oriented event. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've got dogs and other <laughs> animals involved, really, it's just a yeah. bonus. I mean, there's yes. food, there's a band, there's beer, there's activities for the kids. So, you know, we're not going to miss anything. And, and like I said, with all the dogs there yeah. and other animals and sights to see, it's just an added bonus. So. And it gets Teddy's seal of approval, it, too, it's, right? Uh, <laughs> kids are very excited about yeah. the upcoming. <laughs> Right. He's yeah. four years old and he has been to four mutt struts. Gotcha. And so. A mutt strut veteran. There yeah. we go. He Absolutely. is. He's very excited. Very good. <laughs> so again, Sunday, May 6, 11 to 4, Correct. Bennett's Creek Park, again, right here in the city of Suffolk, the 10th annual mutt strut uh, dog walk and festival. So again, it's a great event taking place right here in our great city and we want to encourage everyone to go out and participate, whether you're a dog owner or not. Certainly, there's an opportunity for you to take advantage of this great fun. So thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Talk about mutt strut and we will have more on the scene when we return. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're going to transition a little bit, but stay in the animal world, so to speak. We're joined now by Lori Brittle, who's with Suffolk Animal Care, to talk about their adoption process. And Margie's back with us again to talk about the Humane Society and their process, as well as how these two organizations work together to really bring a comprehensive animal care uh, management practice, as far as here in the city of Suffolk. So, Lori, thanks for being with us. Margie, thanks for being with us again. Thank you. So, let's talk about first up. Um, you know, if, if, sometimes I know people get the two organizations confused. Um, but at the same time, both of you are doing great work in the community as far as to make sure that we're, our animals are being adopted out, giving people great opportunities to find, you know, that, that forever pet that they want to bring home and make a part of their family. Uh, Laurie, talk about the adoption process. We'll start with that with Suffolk Animal Care. So if someone wanted to come visit your facility on Forest Glen Drive mm -hmm. and they come by <laughs> and they find a cat, a dog, or any variety of animals that you may have in the house, so to speak, that day, how that process works for someone that would like to adopt. All right. Um, so actually picking out the animal is probably the most difficult part because there's so many to choose from. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure you pick something that's going to work in your home. Sure. Um, if you have other pets, that's something also to consider because you don't want to completely, you know, disrupt their life. Right. Um, and we do allow people to bring their pets just to see if they get along and make sure that, you know, that's something that's going to work out for right. them. Um, but once the pet is actually picked out, the adoption process is very, very simple. Um, it may take 30 minutes total. Right. Um, but it's just, you know, filling out the forms um, and they do come current with vaccines and rabies certificate. Everything is spayed or neutered prior to going home. Right. Um, if it's already been spayed or neutered, it can go home that day that okay. it is adopted. If it has not been spayed or neutered yet, then it would have to have that done before going home. Now, at your facility, you talked about people bringing in animals to make sure, their own animals to make sure there's cohesion, so to speak. Right. You have little visiting rooms there as well that people can kind of spend some we time, do. is that right? We do. We have three yeah. visiting rooms um, and we also have outside play yards. Right. So some people like to see how they interact outside, walk them on a leash, and they are all fenced in. Right. Um, 
So a lot of times if someone brings their pet, we'll let them have nose to nose contact through a fenced in area just to see, yeah. you know, how yeah. it's going to go. Then we'll bring them inside with a little closer contact. Got it. And Margie, so yeah. shifting gears, the Humane Society, how does your process work in comparison and, and just sort of how y'all kind of do what you do? So we are more of the educational side. Right. So once you, uh, we like to help people understand how to take care of their pets. Mm -hmm. Also understanding the importance of having your dog neutered or spayed um, and doing that. Because really what we're trying to do is educate people about a pet population and how to properly take care of your animals. So we do have a neuter scooter that uh, we have come to the facility usually every month. Right. And you can call our office and we can help get that scheduled. It's Perfect. low cost um, neuter and um, spaying services as well as some veterinary services. Right. But we really try to just educate the meat community on how to live um, well with your animals. Right. And I know the, the two organizations do partner together for the adoptathons that we talk about that are at the PetSmart location in Northern Suffolk and the one at Chesapeake Square. Y'all do partner together with that. How do those events typically run? Because again, uh, certainly, uh, you know, going online and we want to mention y'all, both of y'all do a great job with social media as far as getting those pictures out there and, and getting people interested and all fired up and, you know, the comments about do you still have this, this dog or do you still have that cat and things like that, which again shows an interest in the community to, to tap into the fact that you have great, great um, uh, opportunities for people to partner with and find these forever pets. But um, the adoptathons, how do those typically run when y'all have those? And again, we try to advertise that here on the Municipal Channel as well. Perfect. I'll yeah, we, we do. We have them once a month um, at the two locations, yes. usually the same weekend. Right. So we'll go to the Chesapeake Square on a Saturday and then the Northern Suffolk on a Sunday. Right. We typically typically take five to eight dogs. It just depends on how many volunteers we have walking dogs. Right. Um, we don't want to overcrowd, you know, and have too many in a small area. Right. Um, last time we took five and four of the five got adopted oh, that great. weekend. So it was a good weekend yes. for us. Um, but yeah, we advertise on Facebook and we try to keep our Facebook very, very current. Yes. Um, the staff works extremely hard yes. keeping that current. So, and it changes day to day. Um, so, you know, it's hard for us to say, some people will call and ask which dogs will be there. Well, it depends on right. what dogs are available. Correct. So um, Correct. we try to have a good variety sure. that go. Uh, and we will have usually people waiting at the PetSmart when we get there because they've seen it, right. you know, posted or advertised on the news. Um, but they are usually 12 to 3. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's pretty much the same as it is in the shelter, the adoptions. Um, they're the same price, $95 for dogs, okay. 75 for cats. Yep. And like I said, that does include the current vaccines and sure. the spayed or neutered. Right. Um, the dogs that do go to the pet smarts are already spayed or neutered, okay. so they are able to go home that day. So then if someone came to an adopt-a-thon event like we're talking about, they theoretically could leave there. With, Absolutely. With their, with the, the, we hope they do. Right, yep. exactly. So, I mean, you talk about the fact the great ratio, four out of five were adopted out for that particular day. Um, and that was the thing, because sometimes you don't want to sort of go there. You find the, the, the pet, you make a connection, everybody's great. And then you go, wait a minute, now we got to wait to do whatever. Right. But it's all taken care of on the spot, right? Correct. All the dogs that are there yes. um, are current and ready to go home. Um, and we also do have other pictures of the available dogs back at the right. shelter. Right. So quite often someone will come and look through that folder yeah. and find one that they like better and they'll go back to the shelter for that day. And it's, in, it's interesting, actually, we were at an event, um, Taste of Suffolk downtown, mm -hmm. and I had a couple come up to me and ask, do you have any dogs here for adoption? And we did. We had some that were walking around from sure. Suffolk Animal Care, and it wasn't the right fit for them. I said, you know what they're doing today is they're doing adopt-a-thon down at PetSmart. Why don't you go down and check that out? They adopted a, um, a black dog that they've yeah. had for years, and they come up to me at events now with the dog and say, because of you, we were right. able to find yes. our dog and they're really excited about it every time that you know we see them so it just you know shows the partnership that we can do yes. together for doing that we also have an ad, um, adoption coordinator on site that works with Lori mm -hmm. um, and folks will call up to our site and say hey do you have an adopt-a-thon and we say no nope, we aren't having them but, but Suffolk Animal Care right. is and yes. they're doing it at PetSmart and we give them the parameters mm -hmm. We also have cats at PetSmart, right. so those are our cats out of Suffolk Humane, and you can go and adopt them there. They're there all the time. Gotcha. So our volunteers go in there and um, take care of them, so that's not taken care of by PetSmart. <laughs> we actually have volunteers that go in there and do that. So if you want to volunteer or be a part of that, please reach out to our office. We're always looking for folks to go in and take care of the cats um, different times, different sure. days of the week right. to be able to do that.
And, and I think it's great that, again, the two organizations work as you do because it's kind of like where one begins and ends and the other one kind of picks up and, again, the cohesiveness between there just to make sure, again, that the education component is there, the fact that we're adopting out, you know, the dogs and the cats and the rabbits and whatever else that kind of comes through. And, <laughs> and Laura, I guess, let me mention that. It, it's, I guess it's interesting sometimes, I guess, um, what you have it? What you have <laughs> on a given day? How does That's that? How does that work? I mean, as far, I mean, you're not calling up, but people are bringing these animals to you, or, or your, right. your the officers are out there to, are picking them up and bringing them in. But I mean, it can really vary from time to it time. Does. It does. We never know what a day yeah. is going to hold, and that's why we like it so much. Sure. Um, you know, we may see, like I said, a rooster, a snake, a guinea pig, rabbit, cats, and dogs are you know pretty common, but we get pretty much everything. Sure. Um, you know, and we take in all the strays in the right. city of Suffolk, so right. that's where they come. So any homeless animal that's in the city, yes. um, where where they come to. Um, so we also take surrenders, you know, if people are moving or if it's just not working out for them any longer, they're sure. allergic or whatever, we take surrenders. So. And I think through your Facebook page as well, you do a good job of trying to reunite pets that may have gotten lost mm -hmm. with their owners. And I guess, does that come into play with, with regard to the chips and the ID things that they have, making it sure, does. you know? It definitely does when they've got some form of identification on them, um, but it's very important to keep that identif identification accurate yes. because a lot of times, you know, people don't even register the chip. Right. So, or you move, um, or you've exactly. changed your vet. Yeah. So just making or sure. Or a disconnected or phone number. Correct, right. so right. just making sure that you have those things up to date. Yes. We actually had a success story um, earlier this month where somebody was here vacationing and visiting in Suffolk, mm -hmm. called our office in a panic saying, I've lost my dog, I can't find my dog. Right. And he's describing this dog, and it's a rather large breed of dog that if you saw it just walking down the street, mm -hmm. you would recognize right. this dog. Right. And I don't know if the phone um, coverage dropped, but we ended up not being able to get his information. Right. And then literally within a couple of hours, we get a phone call saying, I've got this dog. And it matches this, the actual um, description right. of the dog the gentleman is looking for. Yes. Um, the gentleman actually, I think, was forwarded to y'all or was forwarded back to us again. Right. And we said, we found your dog. <laughs> So it's, it's great that people yes. use the both of us for a resource. Mm -hmm. um, I told him, I says, you need to go on Facebook and write a, a review mm -hmm. about us helping you do yes. that. But yes. um, we love being a resource. Yes. We love having folks be able to help us with, with being able to do that. And I think that's a good thing. It's sort of like having an, uh, the chip or the identification you're talking, both of you mentioned. It's good to have it, but if you if it's not current, it kind of defeats the purpose, and you have that false sense of security. And the last and the the last thing you want to have happen is the situation happens, and you go, wait a minute, we didn't. It's kind of you're going against the tide at that point, and certainly to make that connection to get them reunited. Um, so again, good advice coming out of both there. Um, so if, if anybody's watching this interview and would like more information. Um, and we mentioned where you're located now on Kingswork Road, but let's just contact information for the two groups. And Laurie, I'm gonna start with you with Suffolk Animal Care. If someone wanted to come by, what are your operating hours and a good contact number for them to call? If okay, question. sure. Um, so the shelter's phone number is 757, of course, 514-7855. Okay. Um, our hours, Monday through Friday, we're open um, 11 to five. Okay. We do have one extended hour on at at, till six on Thursday, so that gives people a little extra time to come in okay. um, to do a redemption or you know visit with the pets. Yes. And then Saturday we are also open eleven to to four on Saturday. Okay. And Margie. So I would say the easiest thing for us is actually go to visit our website, okay. which is www.suffolkhumanesociety.com. It posts our hours. Um, it gives our information about uh, upcoming events that we have going on. Additionally, visiting our Facebook page. Right. It's just going to give the most up-to-date information for, for being able to do that. And often um, we have applications on there for how you can become a member. We have information on how you can come out and volunteer. So also supplies that we're in need of. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the supplies that we get, we share with Suffolk Animal Care. Yes. So it's, it's all about the relationship right. and being able to work together. Okay. Well, ladies, thank you very much for your time today, thank Margie you. and Laurie. Appreciate that. And again, great information here. Again, visit both <laughs> their social media pages, uh, visit their websites to get all this great information. Or stop by again once you, uh, we talk about the operating hours as far as availability. But again, uh, Margie said, again, best contact, use their website. So again, some great stuff there. Talked about Mutt Strut earlier in the show. And again, that's coming up Sunday, May 6th from 11 till 4 at Bennett's Creek Park. A great event. Wanted to be sure you take part in that. So again, thank you for your time thank today. You, thank you. And that would do it for this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We'll see you next time.